Hello and welcome to the third installment of Pride Mix here at Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Dusty. June is LGBTQIA plus Pride Month, and during the month of June, our episodes are called Pride Mixes. Pride Mix is a chance for us to dive deep into queer history and how it intersects with the national parks and the National Park Service's role as America's storyteller. This role is important, though peculiar. We know that history has long been written by the victors, and in America's case, those victors are straight, white, Christian, cisgendered men on crusades towards capitalism. While we wish it weren't so, American queer history is no different. It wouldn't be a subsect of American history if it didn't also come with its fair share of erasure of indigenous people, racism, misogyny, internal homophobia, anti-Semitism, bigotry, and hate. The narrative of queer history that is most often written down and projected is mostly white and male. Events from queer history that are celebrated most often as turning points, while maybe certainly did move the needle toward greater acceptance, are typically centered on groups of white men. For example, the Sippin' at Julius's in New York's West Village, an event often cited in queer history. Have you seen the photos? All gay white men. Most of the time, if we're asked to think of somebody in American queer history, Harvey Milk is one of the first people mentioned. Also a white gay man. And while we certainly have, as a queer community, done some work on making our pride more intersectional, we still have a long way to go. We have a lot of narratives to fix and we have a lot of stories to hear. Okay, so like now, especially here in New Jersey, something mm-hmm. we've talked about is that LGBTQ history is mm-hmm. now being taught. Yes, in the curriculum. And you and I, we've had a small hand in the districts that we have some association with. Sure, sort a of not small really. small hand. The smallest of hands. The smallest of hands. Now, we have not been able to write any of the curriculum no. or choose any of the sources no. or do any of the anything. But yeah. we you are... You know who wrote the curriculum in my district? Straight white people. Yeah. So I bring this up because I know that, you know, a colleague that I'm working with, she crusaded really hard to be on the committee that mm-hmm. um, creates that curriculum for their district. And she was like, I want all of the resources you can give me regarding this. And I just was like, I need everyone to understand that Stonewall is not the be all end all of right. of queer history. Right. Or that queer history is about gay white men. Or that queer history started at Stonewall because it certainly no, did not. No. And no. it didn't end at Stonewall. No. We unpack all of that in last year's trail mixes. Right. And I think that says a lot about a lot of things because as we've mentioned earlier so much of our history is a very narrow lens of the victor who is often white and so not only with queer history but with the history of other cultures societies non-western history it's all very much brushed under the rug or not explored as much as it should be within the education of or, students. Or like one non-white person is like right. centered and it's like, oh, this is our, you know, diversity checkbox. Right. Uh, no, no, no. Queer history is as diverse as all history. Mm-hmm. It's we just have to teach it that way. Exactly. Today, we continue our series on queer icons from the San Francisco community with Crystal Jang, who spent her career as a school teacher and her entire life as a queer activist. Crystal Jang is a Chinese-American queer activist who was the first out Asian-American school teacher in San Francisco. She came out at the age of 13 and found the library to be a trusted resource when she discovered the Kinsey Report. Later in her life, she sought to find a queer community in San Francisco. Much like Rosalie Bamberger from last week's Pride Mix, she wanted to meet other lesbians. She explored gay and lesbian bars, but also attended a Daughters of Belitis meeting. But she found all the spaces to be all white. In the late 1960s, while the gay liberation was starting to gain traction, the women's movement was more front and center. And during this time in San Francisco, Jang played an active role. On her campus of City College of San Francisco, she, along with many of her friends, petitioned for women to be able to wear pants 
on campus. I can't even believe that was a rule, but yes. Through their work, they did succeed in officially changing the dress code. It was also during this time that an archaic rule on the San Francisco trolley was still in effect. This rule said that women were not allowed to ride on the outside of the trolley and that they must sit inside the trolley car. Meanwhile, men could hang off the side, but not women. Now, let's talk about the Briggs Initiative. This bill was sponsored by California State Senator John Briggs, and when it was put to ballot, it was called Proposition 6. This would give California school boards the right to terminate any teacher who identified as gay or lesbian, and also fire any teacher who openly supported gay rights. Famously, Harvey Milk spoke out against this publicly, as did Crystal Jang. At the time, she was a school teacher, and she spoke out against the Briggs Initiative while being interviewed at the school where she worked. When the interview was published, she became one of the faces of the anti-Briggs movement. She continued to rally and protest against the Briggs Initiative, all the while risking her employment to do so. One event that was planned was called An Evening of Education and Culture. From a poster published at the time, the evening was quote, for men and women to learn more about the Briggs Initiative. If passed, the Briggs Initiative would give local California school boards the power to dismiss any person who is gay or any person who openly supports gay rights. Not a single issue. We believe the Briggs Initiative is connected to the attacks on third world people, women, and working class people in this country and internationally. We are committed to fighting all these attacks, end quote. On November 7th, 1978, the majority voted down the Briggs Initiative, which was the first time a ballot succeeded in voting down anti-gay legislation. Crystal Jang continued her activism. She went on to help many organizations, including OASIS, which stands for Older Asian Sisters in Solidarity. Also, Asian Pacific Islander queer women and transgender community, pronounced api cutesy which provides resources and scholarships. And also the Red Envelope Giving Circle, which is committed to creating positive social change in the greater San Francisco Bay Area through philanthropic support to Asian and Pacific Islander LGBTQ-led projects to improve the lives of API LGBTQ people and communities. Crystal Jang has spent her career as a teacher incorporating her advocacy work. She was the middle school coordinator for sexual minority youth and families. She is dedicated to LGBTQ education, specifically as it relates to the Asian and Pacific Islander community. One example of this was creating the first ever Transgender 101 workshop for the staff of the San Francisco Unified School District. And she was recognized for her advocacy work in 2013 when she was made the Grand Marshal of the San Francisco Gay Pride Parade. The sources for this Pride Mix include the section from NPS's LGBTQ Heritage Theme Study entitled Breathing Fire, Remembering Asian Pacific American Activism in Queer History by Amy Suyoshi. The article for Jang, Pride, Honor is a Long Time Coming by David Elijah Namad, published in the Bay Area Reporter, and APIQWTC.org. This has been Pride Mix by Gays at the National Parks, the podcast. And we're here to remind you to pride early and pride often, and that your pride means nothing unless it's intersectional. Gays at the National Parks was created and is hosted by us, Dustin Ballard and Michael Ryan. To see images from this episode, follow our Instagram at Gays at the National Parks. To contact us, email us at gazeatthenationalparks at gmail.com. And to find out more about the parks visited on this show, visit our website, gazeatthenationalparks.com. That's gaze, G-A-Z-E. All original artwork featured on Instagram and on our website is by me, Michael Ryan. All original music was written by Dave Seaman and performed by Dave Seaman, Mariella Klinger, and Sean Sklios. Our music producer was Skylar Fortgang. This episode was edited by me, Dustin Ballard. We would also like to acknowledge that while recording this episode that we are on the traditional and stolen lands of the Lenape people, also known as Middlesex County, New Jersey.